Hi, hello. Welcome back. So this week I'm going to do a week in my life vlog and today is Monday and I don't really have very many plans for today besides just reading. So I'm currently reading Stuck With You by Allie Hazelwood on my Kindle. I actually got this from my library through the Libby app and I've been waiting for this book to come off hold for literally weeks now. I'm currently on page 38 out of 127 so I'm about 27% of the way into the book so far but this book follows two characters Sadie and Eric. The novel starts off with them getting stuck in an elevator together and of course the elevator is extremely small so they're within close proximity of each other. However, Sadie and Eric have met before, their time being stuck in the elevator, and there was some sort of situation that resulted in Sadie essentially breaking it off with Eric, but I haven't gotten to that point yet, but so far I've been enjoying it. There's close proximity because they're stuck in an elevator, and there's also a little bit of back and forth just because Sadie doesn't like Eric anymore. But my plan is to finish that today and I'm pretty sure I can do so because I honestly don't have that much left in the book and it's not very long to begin with. However, my really exciting plan for today reading wise is to finally start A Quarter of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J Mass. If you follow me on TikTok, I made a TikTok recently where I basically had people choose my next fantasy read because I was just about to finish the Legendborn series by Tracy Dion and I knew that I would want another fantasy series to jump in afterwards. And out of Akatar, The Cruel Prince, and Belladonna, Akatar won. This book is extremely hyped on, especially on YouTube and TikTok. I've heard everyone rant and rave about this book and the series and also just Sarah J Maas. In general so I'm excited to read this book and see what I think about it for myself. I'm pretty sure the first one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling slash reimagining hence the title A Court in Third and Roses but obviously it has a fantasy magical twist on it. But those are my reading plans for today. <music> day this morning i went for like a run walk which i haven't done for literal years but i've just been having the urges again to just run but now that the weather's nice and i've been outside more i've been walking more i've been seeing more people just run around and i'm like well i want to run around too i'm honestly not very good at it so it eventually turns into a walk and then i try to run again and then i walk again and the cycle continues until I get back home. But anyways, I finished Stuck With You by Allie Hazelwood last night and I'm gonna talk about my thoughts about it while I do my makeup. Also, my hair is wet so that's why it looks like crazy right now. So like I mentioned, I finished Stuck With You last night and I really liked it. I thought it was cute. I thought it was a quick, short romance, and after just finishing both Legendborn and Bloodmarked, which both books are pretty heavy on the world building, and there's just a lot of terms and knowledge to remember with that series, I needed something where I could just have my brain be on autopilot and read something that's fun and cute. But then I went on to Goodreads and saw all the reviews and Apparently a lot of people didn't like Stuck With You and I was a little bit surprised at that because I ended up rating it 4 stars and I think the average rating is like a 3.5 star rating and when you go onto Goodreads and you go in the review section, the top reviews that show up are like a lot of two stars. But after reading the reviews, a lot of people just didn't like the tropes that were in that novella, which fair warning, the main trope 
and stuck with you is a miscommunication or misunderstanding trope. I can definitely understand why people don't really like it. I myself don't really like it that much either, but I'm willing to excuse miscommunication or misunderstanding as long as it happens just like once or in like a big chunk of it all at one time. I feel like Stuck With You did that. Also, another trope that's in that novella that a lot of people don't like is insta-love, which I agree was rather insta-lovey. Literally their first day of meeting each other, they spent the whole day together and night together, so definitely understand that it's more on the insta-lovey side. And typically, I also don't like that trope very much either. I feel like there's just no chemistry between the characters if it's insta-love. But one thing about Allie Hazelwood in particular is that I feel like she writes really good chemistry and banter between characters. Also, I feel like I'm willing to excuse that trope a little bit more if it's a novella. There's only so many pages that you can use to convey a relationship, so I feel like naturally it is a little bit insta-lovey. But like I said, I really liked it and I rated it four stars. I thought it was cute. Also last night I started Akatar or Court of Throne Roses and I'm really in the beginning stages of that book and by beginning stages I mean the very beginning stages because I only read like the first two chapters last night but so far so good. One thing that I didn't expect at all with Akatar and Sarah J Mass's writing in general was just how flowery the language is and I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. I just thought based on like what other people say about Akatar and Sarah J Mass, I was just expecting a more straightforward direct writing style like today I did this and then I did that and then I saw this and saw that. I feel like with Sarah J Mass's writing style she's very descriptive in the scenes and the characters actions and behavior so far. But I think the rest of my plans today are I definitely want to make another coffee for this afternoon and then I'm also gonna film more content for my TikTok hence why I'm doing my makeup today and also I want to get further in Akatar. I feel like it's gonna start picking up more as some of the basic plot and premises set now. So again, it is now Wednesday. It is such a beautiful day outside and last night I made some pretty good progress on Agatar. I think where I left off I was on chapter 3 and I read up to chapter 19 which is page 167. From chapter 3 to chapter 19 I feel like simultaneously a lot has happened but also not a lot has happened at the same time. So after Feyre hunts and kills the wolf in the forest for her family, we begin to see and find out just how awful Feyre's family is, especially her older sister Nesta who basically does none of the household chores and also her middle sister Elaine basically does nothing either but it seems like Feyre has a little bit more sympathy towards her because as she describes it in the book, Elaine does nothing but it's okay in Feyre's eyes basically because she just finds her dumb, which is kind of funny to read about and to have those thoughts about your own sister. Feyre's dad essentially cannot work since he got his knee busted by some creditors. So not a good family life for Feyre. Basically no one in her family helps her out and they're in some financial trouble, probably at the hands of her father, that leaves them starving and in poverty. But after they return from the village where Feyre sells the wolf skin and earns some money, that's when a another creature bursts into her home and essentially is like, I know what you did, killed my friend, and according to the treaty, there needs to be a trade-off. So either I kill you or you come to live with me in the Feyland. And Feyre chooses the latter option to protect her family. And I didn't even like Feyre's dad that much, but why was his goodbye just so gut-wrenching? He basically tells Feyre that she's so much better than everyone in this village and if she ever gets the chance to leave the Feyland, 
don't ever come back. So sad yet so true from the very little that we've seen of the character so far. So Aira is now living in this fey land and she comes to learn that her captor's name is Tamlin who is also a fey and also living with Tamlin is his friend Lucian or Lucian. I don't remember how I'm supposed to pronounce it but I say Lucian in my head. And as to be expected, Feyre is pretty uncooperative with Tamlin and Lucian. She doesn't really make conversation with them. She's being really observant to find out more about the Feyland and also who Tamlin and Lucian are and what Tamlin specifically wants to do with her. From there, Tamlin essentially tells her time and time again that he's not going to harm her, he's not going to hurt her, and actually her family is under better care now since he will be providing for them because he took away their main breadwinner, Feyre. And this is where the plot of the book is like Beauty and the Beast the most because Feyre is captured by some beast and forced to live on his manor with him. Also, Feyre discovers that both Tamlin and Lucian and the other servants in the house all have these masquerade masks on that they seemingly can't take off and at first Feyre chalks it up to be some sort of fae fairy trend that she's just not familiar with but as the novel progresses we actually find out that there was a masquerade almost 50 years ago where both Lucian, Tamlin, all of his servants in court were attending and there was some sort of attack on them in which they cannot remove the masks anymore and Tamlin in particular is at a loss of power. But of course over time as Feyre is living there longer she strikes up a small friendship with Lucian and she also is becoming a little bit closer with Tamlin. Now I do know a ton of spoilers about Akatar and the series in general so I know we're not supposed to like Tamlin, but I'm going through with the motions of Agatar as if I'm reading it for the first time. And since I'm reading it for the first time, Tamlin is doing a lot of nice things for Feyre. Just got her art supplies since she's really into painting. And he also wrote her poems based on these words that she was writing down that she was trying to learn. And he also cleaned up the gallery in his house so that Feyre can go in and look at all the paintings. Like I mentioned, a lot has happened, but also not a lot has happened at the same time. And I'm kind of just waiting for the next plot point to ramp up. I've also heard like the last 100 or so pages of a Sergei Mass novel are the craziest and most insane. So I feel like right now at page, what, 165, it's kind of at, I don't want to say a slow point, but it is at a slow point in the sense that I'm just waiting for the next thing to happen. Be like, it's coming soon. <music> I just had to jump on here because I think a certain character just got introduced to the story and what a great introduction. Literally all he says is, there you are, I've been looking for you. Anyways, that's all for now. So last night I finished A Quarter Through the Roses, so let's talk about my final thoughts and feelings about this book. So where I left off in this book from last time is that Tamlin was starting to do a bunch of nice things for Feyre. Like, paints, the gallery, and after finishing the whole book, looking at it in retrospect, the first 60% or more of this book feels very slice of life. You just get Feyre's point of view of living with Tamlin and Lucian in the house, and we start to find out a little bit about the world, but also the curse is preventing from really anything interesting being said. So throughout most of the book, I was interested in it and I would read a couple of chapters at a time but it didn't have like a chokehold on me yet so I was able to just put it down and do other things until BAM the climax of the story hits you like a train. It was the most interesting part of the whole book. 
I won't go into too much detail of what happened because I don't want to be a spoiler of anything if you do decide to read this. Even though it feels like I am one of the last people to read this book in the series. For some of my final thoughts in terms of the characters, Feyre, I really like Feyre even though throughout the whole book she was pretty stubborn as a character but she's definitely an independent person and likes to do things her own way. For Lucian, I thought he was a great friend. Also, he just cracks me up. Literally in every scene, he's just there reacting to the situation and the tension between Feyre and Tamlin. It's kind of funny at some points. Tamlin, I thought he was just okay. I felt that Feyre and Tamlin's chemistry just kind of came out of nowhere and then we were expected to believe it. Also, I know that I mentioned this before, but Sarah J Mass's writing style is pretty flowery and descriptive, which I personally enjoyed. However, I will say that there were moments throughout this book where Sarah J Mass would write something and then in the next paragraph or sentence would contradict it. For example, there's a scene in the book where Tamlin comes home and brings home a injured fairy who had his wings removed in a very, very gruesome way. And Feyre describes it as whoever she was, she hadn't just taken his wings, she ripped them off. And then in the next paragraph, she describes it as the wounds were jagged in what looked like uneven cuts. So what was it? Were they ripped off or were they cut off? Anyways, I did like A Quarter on Thorn Roses. I think I'll continue on with the series. The next book being A Court of Miss and Beery which I am excited to read for because I feel like that book is going to be drastically different than Akatar in a good way. But I think my final rating of this book is a 3.75. So I just realized I never closed out the video after giving my final thoughts on Akatar. So here I am to do so. Thanks for sticking around if you made it this far. I feel like I had a pretty good reading week since I read Stuck With You and Akatar, and I'm currently reading Reckless by Elsie Silver, continuing on with my cowboy journey. But yeah, thanks for sticking around. See you next time.